What's going on you guys? The Keith Carnes here. Welcome back to Unsolved Mystery Talk. It's been a long time since I've had an Unsolved Mystery Talk, but let's get into it. This time we were talking about Elisa Lamb, a very, very creepy, bizarre disappearance case. She has been found dead, of course, but she uh, was missing for a little bit of time before they found her. Um, she went missing in the Cecil Hotel. This happened just back in 2013, so just a short couple years ago. And... Uh, Let's talk about it. So Elisa Lamb was a Canadian tourist who was in uh, Los Angeles visiting, obviously, and she stayed at the very infamous and supposedly haunted Cecil Hotel, which uh, housed two serial killer killers, one of which was the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez, and has had a slur of unsolved weird deaths and suicides. So... Yeah, so basically what happened was there is a surveillance tape that has circulated online. It has been confirmed to be real, though some people say it was doctored, altered, uh, slowed down even for unknown reasons, of Elisa Lamb acting very, very strangely inside the hotel elevator. And the hotel elevator itself acts very bizarre, and I will get to that a little later in the video. Um, I will supply both the video... I will supply the video in the... Uh, description below so you can go check that out and I will also supply the Wikipedia page so you can read all about the facts on Elisa Lamb if you're not familiar with the case. It's very very interesting so let's get into this. Um, now remember that Elisa Lamb was found uh, dead, drowned inside the water tanks on, on the roof of the Cecil Hotel and we're gonna go over why that makes no sense, how she got up there supposedly by herself. So let's get into the go into why this case doesn't make any fucking sense and there needs to be a better investigation put into this. So number one, it is unknown how she managed to get into the water tank to begin with. The doors and stairs are locked with an alarm that would have sounded if she had attempted to open them. Only keys and passcodes were able to open said door, so how the fuck did she get in there? However, the fire escape could have possibly bypassed the alarm had she known about it. Now remember that Elisa Lamb was a Canadian tourist. She had no history with with being involved with buildings and, and all this other stuff. So the odds of her knowing that there was a way to bypass the alarm without being busted going to the roof is very slim to none, which leads a lot of people, including myself, to believe that there's more than just her simply going to the roof and supposedly killing herself, or accidentally killing herself at the least. Fact number two. Note number two, whatever you want to call it. All four tanks are propped up on concrete blocks and there is no fixed access to them and hotel workers use the ladders to gain access to them in the past so what does this mean it means that these fucking things these water tanks which you can easily google what they look like the ones that she was actually the one that she was actually found in and you'll see that there's no way that this small woman could have got herself on top of it if the workers have to use a ladder to get on top of the fucking thing to look in to see how the water level is how the fuck did, did elisa lamb climb in there by herself where's the ladder she used at least if there was a ladder still propped up against it when the when the investigation went underway when they were looking for her, that would answer our questions but there was no ladder now some people could argue oh a worker went up there saw a ladder and just took it down but wouldn't he want to look in the tank and think hey maybe somebody's been up here messing with the water you would think right <clears throat> um let's see plus the fact that the heavy lids would be very hard to replace from within now from what the uh, people that actually took the lids off and the workers that have dealt with these lids, they've said they're they're pretty heavy um, and that there's pretty... I mean, you got to remember, Elisa Lamb was a very small Oriental woman. There is no way she got on top of that fucking thing, lifted that up, put herself in there perfectly, and then shut the fucking lid perfectly, making so that nobody could see it. And once again, how'd she even climb in there to begin with makes no sense. Number three, shortly after her disappearance, the police dogs searched the entire hotel and the roof and found no scent of her whatsoever. How is this possible? See, this is another thing, too, is that they even used canine units to go in there to investigate, to get a scent of Elisa Lamb, just maybe find her dead body somewhere. Because, obviously, they probably figured somebody in the hotel killed her and probably maybe stashed her body somewhere, maybe even cut her body up and stashed her somewhere. They found no scent. Nothing. They found no sign of her whatsoever in that hotel. How was that even possible, especially when they went on the roof with these canine dogs, canine units, and they actually sniffed around even the water tanks, and the dogs showed no interest in the water tanks? It's a little weird, especially with a decomposing body inside of them, inside of one of them. Number four, some claim she might have been under the influence of some kind of drug. 
However, there were no drugs or alcohol found in her system, and still, and this still doesn't explain how she even put herself in the water tank to begin with. So let's let's just go with this theory that Elisa was high on hallucinate on hallucinogens. Let's say she was hallucinating her ass off, which is, which would be a possibility if everything made sense of how she got up there, how she put herself in the tank, how she shut the lid. But that doesn't answer all the other mysteries. Plus, nothing was found. But people said, oh, she was dead for so long. She was bloated in the water, yada, yada, yada. So maybe, possibly, she was um, under the influence. And, and her being her body being underwater for so long made it where they couldn't find any trace of the drug. Hey, maybe maybe that's possible. But that still doesn't explain all the other mysteries. It doesn't It doesn't explain everything. Number five, Elisa acted extremely strange in the now infamous elevator video, which is in the description below. She acts like she's hiding from someone or even something. And the elevator itself acts odd as the doors never close, regardless of the fact that Elisa pushes all the four buttons. So I've seen the video numerous times. It's a very creepy, eerie video. Elisa acts like she's hiding from somebody from the very beginning to the very end of the video. And she even pushes all of the buttons as if she's you know trying trying to just just like almost panicking like just push all the buttons just take me off this floor just get me off this floor away from whatever whoever or whatever is chasing me just get me off this floor but oddly the elevator never responds the elevator doors never close now you think okay you know it's just a malfunction it wouldn't close so then to make things even more weird when she finally disappears from the camera's view, the elevator door shuts. Almost almost as soon as she leaves the elevator's area. What are the chances of that? Now, some people in comments that I read about this said, well, she probably just pushed a button from the outside. Yeah, but that doesn't explain, with her clicking all of the buttons, why the fucking thing didn't respond. It makes no sense. I have never been in an elevator and had it do that to me. And I've ridden plenty of elevators in my life. Number six. During the infamous video, Elisa not only acts like she's hiding but start hiding but starts moving her arms and hands in a very strange manner. She almost seems possessed and then return and then returns somewhat back to normal. Why was she doing these very weird movements? Now this is uh, to me this is the creepiest part of the video. Elisa at one point looks down the hall from which she came at the beginning of the video and starts moving her hands can't really see, kinda of starts moving her hands like this and kinda of twisting them like this. Now, this would go hand in hand with what people said about the uh now this would go hand in hand with the <clears throat> the theory that she was under the drug under the influence of a very strong hallucinogenic drug. <clears throat> and they would be right, but like I said, it doesn't make any sense how the elevator didn't work, how she was acting like she was hiding from something. Now, if she was hallucinating, okay, that would explain that. And number 3, how she got on the roof and put herself in the tank with no assistance. Makes no sense. And number seven, my final thing, since her death, an unknown person or persons have been updating her Tumblr blog. Strangely, her cell phone was never found and it is considered stolen. Does this person or persons know what happened to Elisa or are they simply hackers playing a sick prank? Now, this is another very creepy and interesting thing in the story. Unfortunately, I wasn't actually really able to find her official blog, but this was on the official information page I got it from. So maybe somebody else can find it and link it to me. That'd be great. But because uh, I, I don't know how to work Tumblr, you know, I, I don't do Tumblr. I don't do Twitter. The only thing I bother with is Facebook and YouTube. So I don't know anything else other than that. So um, I was going to supply it, but I couldn't find it. I tried to find it, but I couldn't find it. I could just find a bunch of people talking about it. But yeah, so anyway, this is very, very weird. Um, who Who is fucking updating her blog? Now, yeah, this could just simply be a hacker that... You know, oh, this is a really creepy story. I'm just going to hack her Tumblr and, and pretend to post as her or the killer if there is a killer. Or maybe it really is. Maybe it really is someone that knows what happened to Elisa and is playing a sick game by kind of mocking the public by saying, hey, I'm going to post as her and I know what happened to her and fuck you. I'm not going to tell you nothing. Who knows? All I know, guys, is that this is a very, very bizarre case. Definitely was very excited to do this video. I'm very excited to give it out. Uh, to put it out there, and, and I'm very excited to see other people's um, theories. It's very, very bizarre. This this story definitely creeped me out. Creeps me out talking about it. Gave me goosebumps. It's very, very weird. Like I said, the elevator video will be in the description. Please go check it out if you haven't seen it before. 
and uh, you'll know what I mean about the ha weird hand movements and act and everything like that. It's just really, really weird. It's really bizarre, and uh, whether it's actually something more sinister or maybe even somehow she did manage to get in that tank and she died because she was high on drugs, it's really sad regardless of what happened or how it happened. And uh, yeah, so hopefully we'll get some more information on this eventually. But who knows? Anyway, guys, this is Z Keith Carnes. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Unsolved Mystery Talk. If you have any suggestions for future episodes, please leave them in the comments below or send me a private message. I always do. I, I do pretty much all the suggestions I get. And I also always give uh, shout outs so you will get credit in the video. <clears throat> That's about it from me. This is Z Keith Carnes. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my subscribers. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. And uh, hopefully it won't be too long before another episode comes out. I will see you guys in the next. Peace.